Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram. So as you can see, we're filming in a little bit of a different place. Um, it's kind of an odd time of day for me to be filming. It's getting dark outside, all my animal lights are off. So it's not really a good place for me to film. So I thought we'd switch it up. We're out here, outside of my bedroom, on the catwalk, upstairs, in the open. So different place than I normally film. But I felt like the lighting out here was better and st as stuffy. Our AC is broken upstairs, so my room is quite stuffy. So there's a little bit more airflow out here because I'm looking over the living room. There's AC downstairs. So it's gonna keep me nice and cool so I don't get too sweaty during this video. <laughs> so for today's video, um, I'm not gonna have an animal out, but I'm gonna be showing you a lot of other people's animals. So for today's video, as you guessed by the title, we're going to be talking about things I think all reptile keepers need to hear. And what I want to do for this video is while I talk, I'm going to be showing you guys pictures that have been submitted to me by reptile keepers. And it's going to be pictures of them with their pets. And it's going to be a picture that they feel confident in. Because we need to be uplifting everyone in the reptile community. You know, there's a lot of good people. There's a lot of people you know, cheering each other on and uplifting. There's also a lot of negativity. And I feel like the negativity has been rampant <laughs> over the last couple months. As to be expected, everyone's on edge with the virus and everything. You know, people are at home a lot more. They're bored, they're spending more time online. So I feel like we need to take a step back and focus on the positive things again and kind of gain a positive mindset. Hi hey everyone, editing Zoe here. Um, this is bad quality because I'm just filming it with the camera in my laptop, just so I can do this real quick. Um, this video was filmed quite a while ago. I'm just now getting around to editing it and posting it. So, um, obviously we're not like hot in the middle of the pandemic anymore. Things are starting to open back up again. Um, the reptile community has been really great lately. I haven't really seen any negativity, which is awesome. Um, but these are still important things to talk about, things I think reptile keepers need to hear. Um, but as far as the negativity goes, I do mention the negativity in this video, and it hasn't really been that bad lately. Lately, the reptile community has been a really great place. So, yay. Um, finally, I do also mention the mite issue that I had in this video. Um, that has since been resolved for quite a while now, because this video was filmed a long time ago. So... Um, yeah, I just wanted to pop on and say this video was filmed like a month or two ago, <laughs> and it's just now getting posted. But yeah, so anyway, back to the video. So, what I want to do is talk to you guys about a list that I have been making for months now on things I think all reptile keepers need to hear, while showing you guys submissions, pictures of reptile keepers where they feel confident, because we need that. So this list that I'm going to be reading to you. I have my phone because I've been keeping track of it on my notes. There are things that I've wanted to tell others. There are things that I've had to learn myself and tell myself from my own experiences. And so it's just a list. I don't know how much there is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there are eleven things currently on this list. I might think of more while I go through talking on this video. I haven't read it again since I last added to it, so there might be things I want to add. So at this moment, if I read what's on the list, there are 11 things. So before I really want to dive into this video, I did want to show you guys my earrings. If you guys haven't seen that video, these are my Jane Shepherd earrings. They are made from Iguana Shed. Super awesome, super cool. Jane is amazing, customer service is amazing. So make sure you go check out Jane Shepherd Jewelry because her earrings, her jewelry is amazing. I will put her um, website in the description below so you guys can check her out. She makes very fancy jewelry, silver, gold, you name it, out of Reptile Shed. So cool. Okay, so getting into the video. The first thing that I think reptile keepers need to hear and I think it's the most important thing. It's okay to mess up. You're going to mess up. Reptile keeping is a huge learning process. You never stop learning. You never stop learning new information every single day. 
we're discovering new things about reptile keeping and there's new products being made so you're gonna mess up and that's okay as long as you learn from it you realize you made a mistake you realize what went wrong you know how to fix it you learn from it it's gonna be okay Okay, so number two on the list is something I actually had to personally deal with recently, and that's don't beat yourself up over pet loss or a sickness. So many of you know, I recently lost my chameleon, Eugene. That was really hard to deal with. He originally lost tongue function. I don't know why. I don't know how it happened. I possibly could have caught it sooner, but I didn't. I did what I could to try to help him, and it just, it, it didn't work. He ended up passing away. He put up a good fight. You know, it was several, several months of treating him, trying to help him put back, put weight back on. And in the end, it just, it wasn't enough. What's important is that you don't beat yourself up over these things. If an animal gets sick, just do what you can to help it. If an animal passes away, know you love the animal, you gave it a home. If it passed away from a mistake you made, like I said in point one, learn from it, grow from it. Don't spend forever beating yourself up over it. It's going to happen. So just learn from it, grow from it. Don't let it completely destroy you. Some things are out of your control. Number three. You're going to have disagreements and that is okay. There are a million ways to do things when it comes to caring for reptiles. There's tons of different opinions, there's different products. Everyone has a way of doing things. So what's important is that you keep an open mind and understand it's not your way or the highway. It's your way or someone else's way that works for them. You can do your way, they can do their way. You don't have to agree with them, but you can agree to disagree. And this is where a lot of the negativity in the reptile community comes out, is because people, they can't agree to disagree. They can't just see something they disagree with and move on and just know that they're okay with the way they do things and that's the way they're going to do it. And that's the way someone else is gonna do it. A lot of people are very opinionated, they have to state those opinions, and it just turns into a mess. Just know that you're gonna have disagreements. It's going to happen. You can't win every battle. It doesn't even have to turn into a battle. You can agree to disagree. Okay, next one. I think this is number four. It's okay to have bad sheds. A lot of people think that, I mean, let's, let's talk about snakes. A lot of people think that if your snake has a bad shed, it's your fault, you're a bad reptile keeper, you did something wrong. No. Some animals just are bad shedders whether it's a disability because of a certain morph or just that individual animal. Some animals, they just have bad sheds. It is what it is. If sometimes you have a bad shed, even if you're a good keeper, sometimes maybe they're humid hide, you let it get too dry. You don't realize they're in shed, you don't provide a humid hide. Maybe the humidity overall just dropped right around the time that they had to shed. So you have to do what you can to fix the problem. Next time, provide a humid hide, keep a closer eye on your animal, watch for it to go into shed. Keep an eye on the humidity, make sure that at all times it is ready. There's so many things you can do to fix the problem for next time. In the meantime, what you can do is help that snake that had a bad shed. If it has shed still stuck on it, do what you can to help it remove that shed. So. That's another one of those things. It happens, you learn from it, you fix the problem, you grow from it. Doesn't make you a bad keeper. We've all been there. Hell, I'm still there. My Kenyan sand boa, horrible shedder. Only once has she ever had a good shed for me. Only once. I'm hoping now that she's in her bioactive setup that she'll start having good sheds, um, but we'll see.
Next one, and this one I think is very important, especially if you're a snake keeper. You are going to lose a snake. And I don't mean it's gonna pass away, I mean it's going to get out, it's going to escape. It's going to happen, it happens to everyone at some point. It may only happen to you once ever, but it's going to happen. Snakes are sneaky. We make mistakes, we're human. It's going to happen. I can tell you, about 95% of my snakes have escaped on me. Maybe not 95%, but a lot of them have escaped on me. Um, the hardest one, some of you, if you've been here since the beginning, might remember Apollo, my baby rainbow boa, my first baby rainbow boa. He escaped and was never found. And it was the, one of the biggest heartbreaks I've ever had because he was my birthday present to myself, he was my first dream snake, and he was the sweetest snake. So it broke my heart and I cried for like a week. I skipped classes, I skipped work, I skipped my internships, so I could just sit in my room and watch for him and I never found him. So it's going to happen. Phoenix has gotten out three or four times. Granted, none of those times were because of me, but it happened. Tootsie has gotten out twice. Once here and once when I had moved last year. Luckily last year I caught it super early. She was just down the wall a little bit, so that was good. The first time it was like right before Christmas Eve. We found her on Christmas Eve, I think. So she was gone for like two days before we found her crawling across the carpet in the hallway. So I'm very lucky it was us that found her and not a cat. Um, who else has escaped? Tinsel escaped, my baby sunbeam. Granted that was for like two seconds uh, because I was cleaning her tub and I had her in a separate tub of dirt and she, when I wasn't looking, climbed out of that tub and under a pile of laundry I had next to the tub. So luckily I was like, okay, she can't go far. I just turned my head for a second what's nearby, this pile of laundry, I picked it up, there she was underneath it. So I got very lucky with her. Um, well, Snicket hasn't, oh, Zero. Zero is probably the winner of Escape Artists. When I picked him up, for those of you that weren't around during that time when I got Zero last year, I picked him up. I was three and a half, four hours away from home. They gave him to me in a cardboard box. Shame on me for not bringing a plastic bin. By the time I got home, he had at some point escaped that cardboard box without me noticing and was lost in my car. And it was winter, or the end of winter. So I am very lucky that I have zero today. It took about two or three days before he came out of my dashboard and we found him on the floor of the front seat of the car. So I am very lucky that he is here today. So you are going to lose snakes. It is going to happen. Just take a deep breath and try to use your brain. Look around, remember that they're gonna follow a wall, they're gonna look for somewhere dark and cozy to curl up in. Usually, I find my escaped snakes very quickly because I just stop and I think. But no, it is going to happen. So just double check all those locks, make sure doors are always shut. Um, exoterras, very important. Exoterra enclosures, the front opening ones, in the back on the top, there's little holes for your wires to go through. There's a slide to close those holes. If you have a small snake, like a hognose or a sand boa, you make sure that is closed because they will squeeze out. That is how I lost Tootsie the second time. I didn't realize that she would be able to squish out of there, and she did. Now I make sure all my exoterras, that little thing is pushed over to close those holes. Very important for you guys. If you get mites, it does not make you a bad keeper. There are irresponsible ways to get mites, such as not quarantining new animals, but there are so many ways to get mites without planning for it. You can go to a reptile expo and pick up mites. You can go to a pet store and pick up mites. You could just be walking in saying, you know, I just need to get some super worms to feed my animals, then you get some horn worms, pick up mites, you bring them back with you. You can bring mites in, in your substrate. I, in March, I think it was the beginning of March, I ended up having snake mites in my bedroom, in my reptile room, my bedroom, we share the same room. 
three animals were affected. Snicket, my ball python, had them horribly, absolutely horribly. I should have caught it sooner because of how bad he had it, but because he's a banana ball python and he's covered in little black freckles, I didn't catch it. Uh, Kalua, my other ball python, who was across the wall, like way up high, so I'm not really sure how it went from Snicket to Kalua, and Crikey, my jewel lucerta, who was right next to Snicket. I'm very fortunate that no other animals had them. They were all treated, they were all, all their substrates were taken out, everything was washed. It was just those three animals. I am finally now done with it. Snicket and Kalua have finished their 30 or 60 day mite free quarantine. Um, I'm pretty much calling it for Crikey. He got pulled up shortly after, or his 30 days started shortly after um, Kalua, or his 60 days, my lord, I can't talk. His 60 days started shortly after Kalua and Snicket. And I've been soaking him. I haven't really seen anything. It's hard to tell because he's always got like poop crumbles stuck to him or something. So when I put him in water, there are little black specks, but they're not mite looking. So it does make it complicated, but I am like 90% sure that Crikey is mite free as well. So it's been a very long, tedious process. And I can't even tell you where the mites came from. I thought maybe they came from work, but I work with aquatic turtles, so that wouldn't be it. I was like, maybe it was the substrate. But I haven't bought any new substrate in a very, very long time. And I used all the same substrate for my animals, and only those three had it. So I, I don't think it was the substrate. I could be wrong. I haven't gone to any pet stores or expos around that time because everything was closed and canceled because it's the start of COVID. So I have no idea where the mites came from that were in my reptile room. And you know, I had to realize that I, had, I got mites. It's just like losing a snake. Everyone says you're going to get mites at some point. It's going to happen. The best you can do is take preventative measures and just hope it doesn't. But if it happens, it doesn't make you a bad keeper. It's a pain in the butt to deal with and to get rid of, but you can do it. People do it. It might take a long time, but just remember that at some point you will be mite free and you're not a bad reptile keeper because you got mites. Like I said, it can happen from being irresponsible, having super dirty enclosures. Um, not quarantining new animals and if that's why you're getting mites you might want to reevaluate The way you're going about things you might want to start quarantining or you might want to start Being more on top of cleaning your enclosures But bringing it in from substrate bringing it in because you walked into a pet store There's so many ways you can get mites doesn't make you a bad keeper just do what you can to prevent it, and if you get it, do what you can to get rid of them. Sorry, I've been going not off topic, but like extending topics. So let's get back to the list. This one is one that I keep seeing pop up. Some people really disagree with this and this is where a lot of controversial opinions arise. Wanting to keep your owls on paper towel doesn't make you a bad keeper. Did I really just say owls? Obviously I meant reptiles. Some people, paper towel just works much better for them. It's easier to prevent mites that way because there's not a substrate for them to live in. Um, it's easier to clean because you can just pull it out, throw it away, and slap in a new paper towel. It's inexpensive. Some people just like a really clean, sleek look. Paper towel's not bad. It's not naturalistic. It doesn't provide burrowing opportunities, so maybe I wouldn't recommend it for species that like to burrow, like blue tongue skinks, um, uromastics, jeweled lacertas stuff like that, that like to dig and like to burrow. Maybe I wouldn't recommend paper towel for those species, but some people just, they really like using paper towel and that is okay. 
as long as you are providing what is needed for your animals, you should be able to use whatever the heck you want. If you want to use paper towel, fine. If you want to go bioactive, fine. If you want to just use normal substrate that's not bioactive or paper towel, fine. Whatever works for you is what matters. The other people that are judging those that are using paper towels because they don't like it, because they prefer naturalistic, or they don't like the looks of paper towel, that is their problem because they're not the ones that have to live with those animals, have to look at those animals, they have to care for those animals. So their opinion doesn't matter. It's your opinion, what works for you that matters. So if paper towel is what works best for you, then go for it. Personally, I find paper towel to be a pain in the butt. I hate using paper towel. A lot of people like it. I hate it. But I'm not going to judge people that use paper towel. But it's what works for them. It's what works for them. I use it for quarantine. Anything other than that, though, I find it to be a pain in the butt. I would prefer naturalistic. I prefer bioactive. But part of that's probably also because I started off in the zoo field before coming into the reptile field. So I was trained to want to go naturalistic to showcase a natural environment. Um, so it's personal preference. So it's personal preference. Whatever you want to do, you do you. Okay, next one. Okay, this is another really, really important one. If someone critiques your care, don't take it personally. So another reason we have a ton of negativity in this community is because I feel like people can't take critiques, but also people don't really know how to critique. So I'm gonna do a separate video on how to talk to people when they're doing something wrong and you wanna correct their care or you wanna make a suggestion. That's gonna be a whole other video. For this video, we're talking about accepting critiques. So if someone gives you a tip or a suggestion or a correction, they're not attacking you, at least they shouldn't be attacking you. A lot of times they just care about the animals, they want to see what's best for the animals happen. Sometimes they genuinely just, they really care and they want to help you and they want to give you a tip or suggestion or some input. Don't take that as an attack on you. Take that as a way to help your animals. Even if you disagree with them, just think about what they're saying. Maybe they are suggesting that you look into a different UVB or a different substrate or a different, I don't know, a different size enclosure. Think about what they're saying. Maybe you look it up, do some research, consider it. You don't have to go with what they say. You don't have to accept that as right. Maybe you disagree with them. But don't take it as a personal attack on you. They don't know you and most of us just want what's best for our babies. So take it with a grain of salt, think about it, look into it, but don't take it personally. Just think of it as another way to provide for your babies should you want to take their advice. Okay, this one we already talked about. Everyone has different views on animal care. Very important to remember that, you know, reptile keeping has been a thing for a very long time. We've learned a lot, we've grown a lot, a lot of different opinions, a lot of different ways of doing things. It's just important to remember that. It's gonna make everyone happier. This one, very important, it is okay to ask for help. Whether you are a big account, a small account, you have no account, you're just a keeper, it's always okay to ask for help. And there's no stupid questions. You're not gonna learn if you don't ask. If there's something you, you don't know, you're not gonna have an answer unless you ask. Now, sometimes there are there's questions that can be easily answered with a quick Google search. So, you know, try to help yourself first. 
Like if you have a question that's just like, you know, what temperature should I be keeping this animal at? Go to Google first, try to help yourself out, and then go ask questions. Now a lot of the times when questions bring on problems, it's because people ask, might ask questions like that, that makes it look like they didn't do any research themselves, they're looking for someone to just hand them the information. If you're gonna to commit to an animal, you should be able to commit to doing the research to keep that animal. But say you look that up, and now you're confused about ambient versus basking versus cool, how to achieve it all, ask. You are not gonna have an answer, you're not gonna know what's going on unless you ask. If you have a question, ask. It's always okay to ask for help. Even if you are a large account, you know, sometimes people with a lot of following, they feel like they have to be put together. People expect them to act like experts and to know everything. We don't know everything. We have a lot to learn. So if I have trouble with something and I, I don't understand something, I don't know why something's happening, I, if I have a question, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask for help. So ask for help if you need it. Don't try to pretend to be an expert. Don't try to pretend like you have everything put together. If you need help, ask for it. So that's the only way you're gonna get it. And the last one for this video. It's okay to rehome an animal if you feel like you need to. There's a huge, huge gray cloud over rehoming animals. A lot of people have a problem with that because you took on this animal and now you're getting rid of it. Now if you are getting rid of an animal because you took it on and let's say you took on a snake that's going to live like 20 years. After a couple years you get bored and you're like okay I'm going to rehome it. I can see people having an issue with that. If you had done your research ahead of time, you would know that snake's gonna live 20 years and you should have been ready to commit for 20 years. That's where I can see an issue. You decide you're bored with an animal, you rehome it, you get a new animal. I can definitely see that being a problem. Uh, for me personally, I could never rehome an animal, but I get attached super easily. So all of my animals are my babies, I love them very much, I would be heartbroken if I had to lose any of them. So for me personally, rehoming is not an option. For some people, they have no option but to rehome. Whether a landlord says, you know, you can't have your animals, maybe financial reasons. I mean, we're in a pandemic. A lot of people have lost their jobs. No pay. They, they can't feed their animals. They can't take care of their animals. They can't buy new UVB. They can't upgrade enclosures. So financial instability, landlords, maybe they end up sick. There's so many reasons people need to rehome their animals and I don't think that people should hate on those people that rehome their animals. Everyone has their reasons and what's important is that that animal is getting what it deserves, it's getting its best life. And if you feel like you're not the person to do that and you wanna find someone else that can, good for you for putting that animal first. That's what everyone needs to hear. If you are thinking about rehoming an animal, because you don't feel like you're the best fit for that animal, you feel like you can't care for that animal the way it needs to be cared for, good for you for putting that animal first. Don't be ashamed of that. What's important is that animal. That's, that's what I'm gonna say, that's what I'm gonna say. If you rehome an animal because you want what's best for the animal, good for you. Don't let anyone tell you different. 